अरे अरे ये बेल क्यों बज रही है ये बेल क्यों बज रही है क्या हो रहा है यहाँ यहाँ उर्दू की और इंग्लिश की स्टोरी टाइम हो गया है हम सब तैयार हैं कितना मजा आएगा ओ हम स्टोरी सुनेंगे सीखेंगे देश देश की सैर करेंगे ओ व्हाट फन उर्दू एंड इंग्लिश स्टोरी ओ कम वन एंड कम ऑल एंड लेट्स लिसन टू द स्टोरी कम ऑन ओ व्हाट फन वी विल विजिट प्लेसेस वी विल मीट न्यू कैरेक्टर्स we learn new words rules and impress others okay okay let's sit down okay. hmm hello assalam alaikum aap sab kaise hain my young ladies and gentlemen ji have you call your cousins and your friends neighbors all right so i tyar hain aap पहले उर्दू की कहानी एंड देन एन इंग्लिश स्टोरी सो आई एम एक्साइटेड आर यू यस लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड जी इस कहानी का नाम है इतफाक में बरकर इतफाक में बरकर यानी कि यूनिटी यूनिटी ब्रिंग्स ब्लेसिंग्स यस ब्रिंग्स अबंडेंस ओके और इसको भी ये अमेरिका की कहानी है और इसको भी शिराज अली मुस्कुराहट ने इसकी तर्जमानी की है तो चलिए जी शुरू करते हैं एक चाय की प्याली के साथ अपनी कहानी थैंक यू जी किसी शहर में दो सगे भाई रहते थे इनमें से एक दौलतमंद था यानी कि अमीर था और दूसरा मुफलस गरीब था दौलतमंद भाई जो अमीर भाई मुफलिस भाई को जो गरीब था उसको इसके सिर्फ गुजारे के लिए यानी कि थोड़े से पैसे या कुछ ना कुछ दिया करता था इसलिए गरीब वाले मुफलिस भाई को दिन रात इसकी खिदमत करनी पड़ती थी और वो इसकी खिदमत में मसरूफ रहता था एक मरतबा गरीब मुफलिस भाई ने अपनी बीवी से कहा कि मैं रोजगार के सिलसिले में यानी कि मैं बेहतर रोजगार बेहतर काम के लिए नौकरी के लिए अन करीब किसी दूसरे मुल्क को रवाना हो, हो जाऊंगा तुम यही मेरे भाई की खिदमत करती रहना देखना इसको कभी नाराज ना करना वो जो कुछ कहे इसकी ताबेदारी करना जैसे कि हमें अपने माँ बाप की ताबेदारी करनी चाहिए उनको उपे करना उनका कहना मानना ऐसा ना हो कि वो नाराज हो जाएं और बच्चों को कुछ खाने को ना मिले वरना फिर हमारे बच्चों को कुछ खाने को नहीं मिलेगा ये बेचारा जब तलाश रोजगार के सिलसिले में यानी कि जॉब और काम की तलाश के सिलसिले में घर से निकला तो राह में रास्ते में एकदम से उसकी एक फकीर एक बेगर से मुलाकात हो गई वो इसे कहने लगा ए फकीर मैं जिस कदम मेहनत मुशक्कत करके कमाता हूँ इसमें बरकत नहीं होती उसने कहा उससे फकीर से बात की कि मैं इतनी मेहनत करता हूँ दिन रात एक कर देता हूँ लेकिन मेरे कमाई में मेरी इनकम में कोई बरकत नहीं होती मेरे बच्चे बेचारे बस मुश्किल से उनको खाना पीना मिलता है फकीर ने से कहा कि तुम आगे चलो वहाँ तुम्हें एक जंगल मिलेगा जिसमें घने दरख्त होंगे अच्छा ये बेगर नहीं था ये एक अल्लाह वाला था ठीक है ना उसने कहा उसको बताया कि आगे घने दरख्त होंगे उस जंगल में और तुम्हारी किस्मत इस जंगल में फला जगह सोई हुई हाय यानी कि किस्मत जैसे कोई इंसान है प्रसोनिफिकेशन वाह इस फला जगह सोई हुई है इस पर मट्टी पड़ी हुई है मुफरस ने पूछा कि जब वो जगह नजर आए तो क्या करूं 
उसने कहा मिट्टी हटा कर एक तरफ कर दे और अपनी किस्मत को जगा दे हाँ बड़ी है ना मजे की अजीब सी कहानी इसलिए तो मैंने चूज किया आपको सुनाने के लिए चलते चलते ये शख्स इस जंगल में पहुंचा थका और फिर उसने ढूंढना शुरू किया और ढूंढते 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 उस जगह तक भी पहुंच गया जहाँ इसकी बकौल फकीर के इसकी किस्मत सोई हुई थी इसने देखा कि जैसे फकीर ने कहा इस पर इसकी मट्टी पड़ी हुई थी और कपड़े फटे हुए थे इधर उधर बिखरे पड़े थे इसने आहिस्ता आहिस्ता बढ़ के उसकी मट्टी एक तरफ हटाई तो देखा कि इंसानी शक्ल में कोई चीज सोई हुई है देखा मैंने आपसे कहा था ना ये इंसान के रूप में वो कह रहा है किस्मत सोई हुई है उसने उसे जगाने की कोशिश की और उसके करीब आकर आवाज दी कि उठ जाओ लेकिन उसके कानों पर तो जू तक ना देंगे यानी कि उस पर कोई असर नहीं हुआ जैसे उसने सुना ही ना जब इसे जाने जगाने का कोई तरीका कोई तरतीब काम ना आई तो उसने सोता किस्मत जाती नहीं तो बेहतर है इसे जला कर राख कर दिया जाए अब वो बड़ा मायूस हो रहा था नेगेटिव हो रहा था जो कि हमें नहीं होना चाहिए लेकिन देखते हैं फिर क्या होता है ये सोचा उसने और फिर जंगल से लकड़ियां इकट्ठी की और उस इंसानी शक्ल की चीज जो सोई हुई थी इस पर रख कर आग लगा दी ताकि इसकी सोई हुई किस्मत जल कर राख बन जाए लेकिन जब उसे आग की तपश यानी के गर्माहट पहुंची तो वो उठ खड़ी हुई ऐसे करते हुए और इस मुफलिस इस गरीब भाई से मुखाति के ऊपर कहने लगी एम तुमने मुझे जला दिया इसने कहा मुझसे जालिम तुम ज्यादा जालिम हो तुमने मुझे तो वक्त की रोटी का मोहताज बना दिया है भूख की वजह से मुझ में कमजोरी बढ़ गई है मैं चलने फिरने के भी काबिल नहीं रहा जाने कैसे इस जंगल तक पहुंचाऊ मेरे बच्चे भूखे रहते हैं बहुत कम खाने को उनको मिलता है और मैं दर बदर की ठोकरे खा रहा हूँ जब किस इसकी तो भरी दास्तान सुनी तो उसे थपकी दी उसे कहा आ तुम अपने बच्चों को लेकर दूसरे शहर चले जाओ हाँ ये मशवरा था उसकी किस्मत का हम्म वो बोलती भी थी जी देखते हैं अब क्या होता है ना मजे की सोई किस्मत जाल गई जब उसने जलाने की कोशिश की रही और क्या नाम था बच्चों कहानी का जी इतफाक में बरकर जब ये गरीब भाई मुफलिस अपने घर पहुंचा तो इसे मालूम हुआ कि के भाभी ने यानी बड़े भाई अमीर भाई की बीवी ने भाभी ने इसके बच्चों को मारा पीटा और उनको घर से निकाल दिया है बच्चों ने इसे कहा कि अब जान आपकी भाभी ने हमें घर से निकाल दिया और हमारा खाना भी इसने बंद कर दिया है इसने अपने भाई से कहा कि जैसे भी हो मुझे एक गधा दे दो ताकि मैं अपना सामान इस पर लाद कर मैं किसी दूसरे मुल्क में रोजगार के लिए चला जाऊं चलो जी उसका भाई मान गया भाई ने उसे गधा दे दिया और कहा जहां जाना चाहते हो चले जाओ हम्म तो फिर वो एक किस, किसी तरफ रवाना हो गए चलते चलते ये लोग एक घने जंगल में पहुंच गए वहां एक दरख्त के साय तले उन्होंने अपना सामान उतारा बच्चे बाप के करीब बैठ गए तो वहीं दरख्त पर एक परिंदा चहचहा रहा था परिंदा किसको कहते हैं जी बर्ड को जी ये देखें इस किस्म का कोई परिंदा चहचहा रहा था चू 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 ठीक है, और फिर देखते हैं कि परिंदा 
से क्या उनका इंटरेक्शन होता है उसने बच्चों से कहा उस वो परिंदा बोलता था जनाब उसने कहा तुम फौरन लकड़ियां इकट्ठी करके लाओ और पानी भरो ओ बाप ने कहा माफ कीजिएगा उसने बच्चों से कहा कि तुम फौरन लकड़ियां उठाकर ले आओ और पानी भरो आग लगा के ठीक है इस परिंदे को तुम्हारे लिए शिकार करूंगा बच्चे उठ खड़े हुए एक लकड़ियां जमा करके लिए रवाना हुआ तो दूसरा पानी भरने के लिए गया बीवी पतीले में देखी धोने लगी अब उसने तीर कुमान उठाया और निशान बांधने ही वाला था परिंदे ने कहा मुझे क्यों मार रहे हो मुझसे तुम लोगों की शकम सीरी नहीं होगी यानी कि तुम्हारा पेट नहीं भरेगा मैं तुम्हें एक छुपे हुए पोशीदा खसाने की खबर देता हूँ और फिर परिंद ने कहा वो खजाना इस दरख के नीचे दफन है इस दरख के नीचे जो मट्टी है उसके नीचे दबा हुआ है ये सात बादशाहों का खजाना है इसको अपने लिए ले जाओ और ऐश इशरत से गुजारा करो ठीक है मुझे एक सेकेंड इजाजत दीजिए मुझे जरा एक्सक्यूज कीजिएगा माफ कीजिएगा Bella Raza, you're always kind. Thank you so much. Inshallah, मैं फिर आपकी किताबें पढ़ूंगी इनशाला <coughs> अब वो जो परिंदा था वो उनको मशवरा दे रहा था कि आप इस दरख्त के नीचे खो दो और सात बादशाहों का इसमें इकट्ठा किया हुआ खजाना है और तुम लोग ऐश और इशरत से आसानी की जिंदगी बसर करोगे इस इसने उसने परिंदे को जब देखा कि वो बोलता है बोलता है इंसानों की जबान में तो उसने कहा जरूर इसकी बात में कोई हकीकत होगी तो उसने उसको छोड़ा तीर कमान को और वहीं जमीन को दी शुरू की तो देखा कि वहां खोता गया और बड़ी बड़ी देखे यानी कि कोल्ड्रोन बड़े बड़े पतीलों की तरह कंटेनर्स सोने से भरे पड़े हैं इसने वहां से तमाम दौलत उठाई और फिर सोचा और परिंदे का शुक्रिया अदा किया और फिर अपने गांव की तरफ गया और वहां उसने अपने लिए जमीने खरीदे और रहने के लिए खूबसूरत मकान तामीर करवाया एक के एक जरबुल मिसल है यानी कि एक कहावत है कि ऊपर का पत्थर नीचे गिरता है और नीचे का पत्थर ऊपर जाता है खुदा की कुदरत देखिए कि थोड़े ही दिनों में दौलतमंद भाई गरीब हो गया मुफलिस हो गया और अब उसको सोच आई कि मैंने अपने भाई और भाभी और अब उसके बच्चों के साथ बहुत जुल्म किया जरूर ये उसकी सजा भी हो सकती है तो वो उनकी तलाश में निकला जब तलाश करते करते जब इसकी अपने भाई से मुलाकात हुई उसने उससे उसका हाल पूछा तो भाई ने जवाब दिया ये सब मालो दौलो जो तुम देख रहे हो ये मेरी है ने पूछा कि सब तुमको कैसे मिला भाई ने बताया कि फला दरख्त के नीचे हमने क्याम किया था इसी दरख्त बड़ा मासूम सीधा सादा उसको कोई नहीं था कि मैंने भाई से बदला लेना है नहीं कह रहा था तो खुदा की तरफ से उसके दिल में था उसकी सोच में कि मुझे मिला है तो क्या हाज अगर मेरा भाई भी उससे फायदा उठा ले उसने ये नहीं सोचा कि उसको घर से निकाल दिया और उसको कितनी सख्ती में रखा था मेरे बच्चे भूखे थे उस रख्त इसको बता रहा था मैंने दिलासा दिया कि तुम्हारे लिए इस परिंदे को शिकार करूंगा तुम लोग जाकर लकड़ियां जमा करके लाओ पानी भरो मेरी बीवी ने देखी धोना शुरू कर दी हर एक किसी न किसी काम में मसरूफ हो गया 
इतने में परिंदे ने कहा मुझे ना मारो मैं तुम्हें एक बात बताता हूँ जिससे तुम दौलत बन बन जाओगे फिर इसने मुझे बताया इस रफ के नीचे सात बादशाहों का खजाना है मैंने वहां से खजाना निकाला और इसे अपने लिए अब सब कुछ खरीदा और बनाया और मैं अपनी जमीनों पे काम भी करता हूँ दूसरा भाई भी फौरन वापस गया अपने बीवी बच्चों के साथ इस दरख्त के पास पहुंचा सामान वगैरह वहीं उतारा और दरख्त के तले कयाम किया खुदा की कुदरत देखी कि वो ही परिंदा दख पर आन बैठा उसने बच्चों से कहा कि जाओ लकड़ियाँ जमा कर लो देख चीत हो लो क्यूँकी मैं इस परिंदे को तुम्हारे लिए शिकार करूंगा और तुम्हें खिलाऊंगा बच्चों ने कहा आपने कौन सा परिंदे को शिकार कर लिया है वो तो अब तक दरख्त पर बैठा है फिर भला हमें क्यों लकड़ी पानी लेने जाएंगे पहले आप इस परिंदे को तो मार के दिखाए इधर बीवी बोली कि मुस्फी की वजह से तुम्हारा तमाह काम नहीं कर रहा परिंदा इनकी बात सुन रहा था जब वो अपनी अपनी कह चुके तो बोला ए बस किस्मत लोगों वो लोग जिनको मैंने दौलत का सुराग बताया था इनका आपस में इतफाक था इन सब के दिल में आपस में मिले हुए थे वो एक दूसरे की बात मानते थे एक दूसरे की इज्जत करते थे एक दूसरे की मदद करते थे सब एक तरह सोचते थे ये कहकर वो परिंदा उड़ गया ओ, अब वो ना चाह वो समझ गया कि ये तो अब हमें खजाना नहीं मिलेगा वो अपना सामान बांध कर बड़ा भाई जो कि अब गरीब हो गया था भाई की तरफ रवाना हुआ उससे कुछ मदद मांगे जब भाई के बच्चों ने देखा अपने बाप से कहने लगे आपका भाई बीवी और बच्चों के साथ आ गया है इसकी बीवी हमें चमचे और डोई से मारती थी हमसे अच्छा सलूक नहीं करती थी हम इनको यहाँ नहीं रहने देंगे मगर बच्चों की माँ बोली जो सलूक अपने दौर में इसने किया वो सब जानते हैं मगर अब हम इनको कुछ नहीं कहेंगे हमारा दौर था जैसा भी था गुजर गया और देखिए बस देखिए दोनों भाई मिलकर रहने लगे और उनकी कमाई और उनकी रहन सहन में इतनी बरकत हुई कि आप सोच भी नहीं सकते तो बेटा अपने बहन भाइयों के साथ अपने अम्मी अब्बा के साथ कजन्स फ्रेंड्स स्कूल में घर में हर जगह इतफाक और अखलाक से रहे तो फिर आप देखिए ये नहीं कि जी अच्छा उसने ज्यादा मार्क्स ले लिए तो बस हमने नहीं उसको बताना हमने कहाँ से पढ़ा नहीं मिलजुल के अपना नॉलेज अपनी इंफॉर्मेशन जो भी है उसको शेयर कीजिए जी देखिए अल्लाह पाक हमें कितनी नेमतों से नवाजते हैं राइट तो हमें भी जो कुछ हमारे साथ है सबके साथ मिल बांट के तफाक से उसको इस्तेमाल करना चाहिए तो कैसी लगी ये मुझे बहुत ही अच्छी कहानी लगी जी इसमें मैजिक भी था और बहुत अच्छा सा सबक था क्या ख्याल है आपका जी अब तो टाइम होने लगा है हमारी इंग्लिश स्टोरी का It's time for us my little fellows and little ladies it's time for our story book okay the name of the first story is Mr Stamp about goes shopping now Mr Stamp about means this guy stamps his foot probably gets angry or probably that's his way We'll find out about this gentleman. So, are you all ready with your smoothies and milkshakes? What a lovely way to start a Sunday! Exciting, right? And we travel to England with this Mr. Stam, and then we visit his town and see what's going on in his mind and in his life. Yes, Mr. Stam, about. Stalked into Mr. Tidy the tailor's shop and banged on the counter. Oh my God! So he's quite a stamp out that he means he bangs his foot, right? He thuds his foot. I want to be served, he said. I'm in a hurry. 
Mr. Tidy, like his name tells us, the tailor's shop, turned from the customer he was serving. Yeah, when you go to a shop, are you supposed to start talking to the salesperson when he's attending somebody else? Well, that's bad manners. You should wait for your turn. And don't forget to wear your masks. Mm -mm. And carry your sanitizers. Mr. Tidy, when he heard him, turned from the customer he was serving because he expected that he will wait for his turn. Just a minute, sir, he said, I'll come to you as soon as I finish helping this gentleman. Hmm. I want serving now, said Stamp about rudely, rudely. Very well, sir, said Mr. Tidy, and called to the back of the shop. Forward, please, button. Now, now that's the name of his probably his helper or the other salesperson. Out hurried, a scared looking boy with a button in one hand. You know what a button is, right? You all have buttons. Do I have buttons? Oh, usually I have buttons on my shirt. Okay. Very well. Okay. Out hurried, a scared looking boy with a button in one hand and a needle in the other. I'm just sewing on those buttons, sir. He said, do you, did you want me? Yes, serve this gentleman, said Mr. Tidy, and poor little Button looked in alarm at the fears. <gasps> Mr. Stamp about, oh, he was quite a <clears throat> stormy looking man. I will not be served by this little shrimp. What a mean thing to say, said Mr. Stamp about, banging on the door, on the counter again. Well, sir, uh, now, now he called that poor little boy, Shrimp, who was already frightened of him. Well, Mr. Tidy said, well, sir, I haven't any lobster, lobsters serving in the shop today. <laughs> Isn't that funny? He answered him in his own language, said Mr. Tidy, apologetically. I'm sorry, sir, we don't have any lobsters because lobsters are bigger than shrimps. That made his customer laugh loudly and little but <laughs> in delight and the other customer laugh just up like I'm sure you're laughing also. Stamp about, stamped his foot and began to roar again. I'm in a hurry. I've got to go to a grand luncheon party and I want a new coat and hat and umbrella at once. Oh. Show him some coats, Button, said Mr. Tidy, and with trembling hands, poor, poor Button took down some coats from a rail, and Mr. Stamp tried them, tied them on, grumbling, what the hell, what the hell, what the hell, what the hell? awful color, shocking pattern, what a color, oh, awesome. Look at these pockets and the price. My word, what robbers you are here. Well, would you like to fetch the policeman? Asked Mr. Tidy, getting a bit tired of Mr. Stamp about. He's always interested in robbers. Look, he's just outside across the street. But Stamp about didn't fetch him. Why did he say that? <laughs> He said that because he called him a robber. He was criticizing the clothes and then telling him that he's a robber, that he's charging so much for such shoddy things. Hmm. He knew that the policeman wasn't very fond of him. He tried on more coats and then, and he tried on more coats and then called for hats. Silly hats. All too small, he said. You have a rather big head, sir. Mr. Tidy spoke in his tone. Look, there's a good hat there, the largest size we have. Put it on his hair, button, and see what button. Ah, look at the monstrous looking Mr. Stamp about. This is Mr. Tidy. This is a little button he had to climb up. And then he's helping the largest hat 
helping him to wear the largest hat they had. Okay. Button carefully fitted it on stamp about said it was just a size and a very nice hat indeed. Hmm, hmm, not bad, not bad when he wore it, said Stamp about, turning his head this way and that way, with his proud neck and head to see the hat better. Yes, I'll have it if it is not too much money now. What about an umbrella? And after that, I'll decide on a coat. So finally, see, he's coming down to earth. But it gave him one. Not bad, he said, stamp about and open it so suddenly that button fell over backwards. See, what a rude, awful man he is. In the end, hey, then he says, hey, where's that little ship gone? Hey, what are you squatting on the floor for? Get up at once. He meant, what are you doing on the floor? Hey, get up! In the end, stamp about, chose a coat, a hat and an umbrella. But how he argued about the price. If I buy three things, I ought to have them cheap. He said and began to stamp about the shop, calling Mr. Tiny Robber and a thief until the poor man got so tired of him that he gave way. He gave him anything to get stamp about out of his shop. He was scaring other customers away. That would have been more of a loss. Very well, I'll take a pound. Very well, I'll take a pound of the price, said Mr. Tidy. Button, wrap up the things. Then Mr. Stamp about can go. No, don't wrap them up, said Stamp about. I want to wear them. I told you I'm going to a grand luncheon party. Here's the money. Here's the money and I still think you're robbing me, charging so much even though you took a pound off the price. He said, like if you even if you're charging me a pound less, but you're charging me too much and I don't wrap them up. I have to wear them. I'm going to a grand luncheon party. Mr. Tidy said nothing. He was sure he would lose his temper if he had much more of stamp about. Now he was being very patient. And I'm telling you, patience is your best friend. Remember that. Hmm? Hmm. So little button tremblingly helped him oh, into his new coat like and gave him the new hat and the new umbrella. Then he scampered into the back of the shop and sat out happily to his task of sewing on buttons. Stamp about, went out of the shop, stamping his foot without so much as a thank you. He muttered crossly as he went angrily. Robbers, what a price to pay for new clothes, he said. Oh, how awful, how awful, how expensive. He was on his way to Mr. High Up, who was giving the party in his very grand house on the other side of the town. So, Stamp About decided to take a shortcut through the woods, the jungle. Just as he stepped into the jungle, into the wood, the wind got up and Dog at his hat. There you go. And he had to hold it on tightly. He was trying to go against the wind. Stop it, wind, he said. Can't you see I'm wearing a new hat? I don't want it blown into the wood. Behave yourself. He wa wanted to control everything. He wanted everything going his way. Mm. Now he's telling the wind that got up that you better behave yourself. But the wind was going to do as it liked, you know that. You can't stop the wind from blowing. We can turn off the fans, yes. It waited till Stamp About was in the wood. And then it bounced on him and blew 
his new hat right off his head and what was more it blew it high up into a tree can you see the wind there is this is the wind blowing this is mr stam wood and here is the hat and it's got stuck on the bow or the branch of a tree do you think do you think it serves him right for being so nasty and rude and humiliating and aggressive hmm So the wind pounced on him and blew his hat right off his head and what was more it blew it high up into a tree. Stan Bow lost his temper. Take a good look and he is yelling and stamping his foot. Mm, how dare you? That's my new hat. Blow it down to me at once. Shake yourself tree and throw down my hat. Now he's saying silly things in his temper. in his selfishness isn't it but the hat of course could not hear him it didn't stir from the tree it hung up there on a small branch and jiggled a little in the wind all right i'll come up and get you oh said mr stamperbat but i'd better take off my grand new coat as i shall tear it on a branch and i'll stand my new umbrella beside it too so he decided to go up himself because the hat was not listening to him <laughs> isn't it funny so he decided that he'll take off his coat and put it under the tree and the umbrella also so that they don't get spoiled so he took off his coat and laid it carefully on a tree stump you can see a tree stump yeah that's it hmm okay uh but that uh, all right and uh or he stood his umbrella beside it then back he went to the tree and began to climb it it was a difficult tree to climb and little bits and pieces kept catching at him as he climbed you know like the bark the stem the trunk it has woody chips coming off oh he felt very cross indeed he was very annoyed and angry what a long way up is this hat just as he got almost to the hat at the top of the tree the wind pumps down again and blew so hard that the tree rocked from side to side it made a rustling sound and noise and stamp about very nearly fell out see what's happening to him at the top of the tree and the wind is blowing hard and then we we'll see what happens he clung to a bough he stuck to he grabbed he seized a branch a bough or a twig for all he was worth now down in the wind wood below was a little old man and can you guess what he's doing what did he come across ah he was very poor and had come to pick up wood for the fire He came up to the tree stump where Stamp about had put his coat and umbrella, and stared at them in surprise. Why were they here? Whose were they? Had someone left them there because he didn't want them anymore? But the coat seemed a very good one, and the umbrella was a beauty. Now he's wondering and asking questions to himself, right? And does anyone own these? Shouted the old man, but nobody answered. Stamp about was being blown about in the tree, and he didn't hear a thing. Well, well, it seems a pity to leave them here to rot in the wind. and rain said the old fellow i can sell them for quite a bit of old money so he picked them up 
and went off with them wearing the coat and swinging the umbrella feeling very grand now who will buy these he thought yes i'll go to old tidy the tailor's he's a nice fellow he'll give me a fair price for them so everybody knew the tidy the tailor's but when he got to mr tidy's shop the tailor was just going off to his lunch he called to little button hey button see to this man for me will you he says he's got second hand clothes to sell give him a fair price and off went mr tidy button was astonished to see the coat oh the three the uh, the, uh, the, the the coat the umbrella and the not the hat it is stuck on the tree they can't be the ones i sold this morning because that's off that awful mr stamp about went off in them right he thought and he certainly wouldn't give them away almost at once Will you buy them, us old fellow? The coat is quite good, you know, and so is the umbrella. And there is Mr. Buttons, and the old man is showing the coat and the umbrella. Can you see? Yes, you can see. Okay. We sell the same things ourselves. I'll give you half the price we charge when they are new. That's fair enough. Hello. Okay. Okay. Very fair," said the old man in delight. "I can see sausages for my supper. Yum! Every night this week, and a fire in my kitchen, and hot cocoa before I go to bed. That's what money means to me, young button. I'll take it now." So he started dreaming. He said, "Whatever price you want to give, give. I can have sausages. You know what sausages are, and you kids love them. And this, and every night, and a fire in my kitchen, and hot cocoa before I go to bed. It's so cold. That's what money means to me, young button. I'll take it now." He went off happily with money. See, some people are happy with whatever they have. Yes, and jingled it in his pocket all the way to the sausage shop. What luck! Button went back to his job of sewing on buttons, but he had not been working for more than ten minutes when he heard a loud roaring outside the shop. Gracious! Had a lion escaped from a circus? But to run behind a rail, of course, and travel. He's a very scary, timid child, isn't he? But it wasn't a lion. It was only a very, very angry Mr. Stamp about. He came stamping into the shop and roared for Mr. Tidy. He's gone to his lunch," said Button, peering out fearfully. From behind the coast, there's only me here. Oh, the shrimp," said Stamp, about rudely. Hmm. Well, look here, someone stolen that new coat and umbrella I bought this morning. The wind blew my hat up a tree, and while I was climbing to fetch it, a thief came along and took my coat and umbrella. We all know about that, don't we? We are smart. We knew exactly what had happened to his clothes. Button. Immediately felt certain that the thief was the old man who had just sold him a coat and umbrella, and he was very frightened. Oh, so he began, and old man, um, old man came in just now. Don't interrupt me when I'm talking," said Stamp about angrily. "I tell you, when I came down the tree, but I, sir, I'm sure that the old man who 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 he couldn't." He was stammering," said Button earnestly, and once more stamp about, cut him short, and even tried to box poor Button. Say, hey, hey, listen to me! Stop talking about old men. Show me a coat exactly like the one I bought this morning, and an umbrella. I shall be ruined having to buy them, but I simply must go well dressed to this party. 
He didn't pay attention. The buttons was trying to tell him what? That, that his coat and umbrella were with him. The robber had sold it to him. But he wouldn't listen and he was scared and coward. It came to his benefit being frightened and being timid. And he said, I want exactly the same coat, same umbrella because I have to go in a proper attire, proper clothes, well clad to that lunch party. It's for the high and mighty and the elite and the rich. Okay. Hmm. I sh okay. He said, I'll be ruined. Yes, sir, said Button, not daring to say any more about the old man. Well, I'm afraid we haven't a coat or umbrella like the ones you bought this morning, sir. You storyteller, cried Stamp, about angrily pointing to the coat and umbrella that the old man had just sold to Button. This a coat like mine and umbrella, too. How dare you tell such untruths? I'll take those and you'll have to take a pound off the price just as you did this morning. But, sir, do listen, sir, began poor Button desperately and then gave a yell as Stamp about picked up the umbrella and chased him round, around the shop with it, shouting all the time, goodness, what a man, goodness, what a man. He's just angry all the time. All right, take the coat, sir, and umbrella. See, he's running about fiercely. Look at his expressions and shouting not paying attention, not being a patient, good listener, you know, st listening to stories. You're listening to me, right? And you're developing the listening skills and you're developing patience. Hmm. Yell button from behind the counter. Leave the money over there. Don't you come near me again. Oh, please, sir, please go. You can take the coat and just leave the money. With a loud snort, stamp about, put the money down, shush, took the coat and umbrella and went stamping out of the shop. Patton sat down on a chair and wondered what Mr. Tidy would say to him and knew that he had sold Mr. Stamp about the same coat and umbrella they had already bought that morning. Would he be very angry? No, he wasn't. When he heard poor Patton stay, he sat down on a chair and laughed and laughed till the tears ran down his cheeks. Even, even Shrimp started giggling and chuckling. They both were chuckling. Oh my word, to think that you were clever enough to sell the old rascal his things all over again. Well, he wouldn't listen to your explanation. So it's not your fault. Because he was not listening to you. You tried your best to tell him the truth. So it's his own fault. You can have half the money yourself, Button. You had to pay half price to the old man for the things. So you can put half the money back into the till and keep the rest yourself. Oh, what a fair man. What a fair man. And Button felt so excited. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, said Button. That will make up for all the frights he gave me. Oh, he frightened me so much. You have compensated me for that frightening time. Thank you very much. Whatever would Mr. Stamp about say? If he knew he had paid twice for the same thing. Ha! Ah, well, I can guess. But as nobody will ever tell him, it won't matter. It was a very, very expensive morning for him, wasn't it? Ha! What a man! See? Angry. Even his gait, way of walking is maddening. Woof! So how did you like this Mr. Stamp about? And the little button. Oh, wasn't that a sweet story? But if we listen to others, you know what? It might be to our advantage. Always remember that. Listen to your elders, your teachers and the storyteller, story reader. Yes, I love you. Yes, please send me suggestions and your messages to whatever you want to. Listen, oh, here are the birdies. They want to say bye-bye. They were listening too. There is the ducky. 
my little ducky, oh, her neck is going, it's all just swaying in the wind like the hat. Okay, bye-bye. God bless you. See you next Saturday and Sunday. Saturdays on Scary Army Group on Facebook at 5.30 and next Sunday morning, 11.30 on Facebook, exactly the same place, the same time. And you can always press the button and listen to my stories anytime you want at bedtime party time at the end of the party when you're tired you can all get together and listen to this part story ah and make a game out of it maybe you can have an activity and have a questionnaire bye bye i gave you an idea that's